Jeremy, whose uh, one hand catcher is better, yours or Luke's? Uh, when was Luke's? Uh, Rutgers. At Ru oh yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> that was, uh, oh boy, we've already forgot about it. Yeah, Poor I was, guy. I just couldn't think about it. Uh, that was a really good one. It, it was cool because he got his feet in. He was getting very contested. So I don't know. I think his might have been might have been cooler than mine. Will. It was contested right in the corner. Had to sneak his feet inbound. So I think that one might have got mine. But you forgot about it. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. I, I didn't know what we were talking about. <laughs> you had three touchdowns in the opener. You're probably thinking like, okay, this is going to be a huge touchdown wise. Then you'll get another one until late in the season. But you, you did it in style. Were you thinking there for a while like, it's another touchdown going to come after getting those those three in the opener? Uh, it was only two in the opener. Or excuse me, two in the opener. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it was. Uh, I mean, I wasn't really thinking about that this whole year. We've been trying to just think about the, the team goals and, and about how good our unit's doing and our team's doing. And I really was. It, it's cool to get in the end zone. Everybody sees it, but all the other stuff we do is it just means so much more to our team and, and our program. And, and I think we take so much pride in that that I, w I really wasn't thinking about that. You said something earlier this year. When I asked you about you, know, you were a pass catching tight end coming here, but this school obviously doesn't produce those kind of players very often. And you talked about how you needed the other parts of your game to become well-rounded, and that's a big reason you came here. Um, I thought that was quite mature and, you know, for a young player, especially. Uh, first of all, where did that kind of attitude come from? Um, I think I just wanted to come to a place that would have maximized me in all three three uh, levels of being a football player, is, one, is on the field, off the field, and, and after football. And I think this is the best place to do that because uh, – I knew if I came here, I wouldn't be able to get on the field unless I learned how to pass, protect, and, and run block. And I think learn how to do those two things the last the last year and a half. It's, it's been it's been crucial in, in developing me as a player, and then just all the other stuff with academics and, and and life after football here. I think it was just there was no question of, of to come here and, and develop as a human being, and not just a football player. Because there are a lot of people who say, okay, this is my strength. I'm going to go to a place where I'm going to play to my strength, and not necessarily work on my weakness. Um, you obviously have kind of the opposite. I mean. The goal is obviously to, to make it to the next level, and and if you're a one-dimensional one-dimensional player, there's only so many things you can do, and and with all the cuts they have and, and the short ro the small rosters they have, that I think that coming to a place like this, getting developed as a complete tight end, was was the best option for that. When you look at the pass protection and the blocking that you're talking about, just how dramatic has the uh, improvement been in your estimation? Uh, I think it's been a, a pretty big improvement. Uh, I came in not really knowing what to do and how to do it, and and really getting into the what the coaches were teaching me and, and how to get the mindset of, of attacking people and not sitting back and let them attack you. I think that was the biggest thing is just learn how to play physical and, and the mindset that it takes. And I think it's, it's been a pretty big jump from last year. What kind of example has Luke set for you there? Uh, he's just another player that's kind of grown throughout the program. And he came in and he's always told me stories about his freshman year and, and how tough it was and, and how he really had to work for everything that he's getting. And, I respect that, and I respect the player he's become, and, and I'm just trying to follow his lead and, and see how to get better because he's really, like, our, our whole unit is just good at, at playing physical, playing tough, and, and playing hard, and I just try and follow the lead. What's kind of, I mean, to have four tight ends who really do play all the time, it's pretty unique. I can't think of any other team that's done that and done it kind of as harmoniously and effectively as you guys have. What's been the secret? Uh, I think it's just the whole offseason that we put in together is, we, we knew our unit was going to be special with everybody coming back and, and how hard we worked. To, we, were, we won, like I said, we won best unit in the winter as far as workouts and, and showing up to everything. And we knew that we were going to be a, one of the older units and we, they were going to rely on us to be to set an example. And I think just we feed off each other's successes and we try and fix each other's weaknesses as a, as a unit and not as individuals. So I think coming in that we knew everybody was going to play and, and when you get your shot, you got to go out there and, and, and make your play and, and make your block or whatever, whatever the case may be. The Outside matchup with Clemson. Rashad. Go ahead, Jer go ahead. Outside of Rashad, you guys are also coming back next year. Like, where's the ceiling for for that group, and where do you see the biggest still need for improvement? Um, I think, like you said, there's always a need for improvement, and it's all on film, so we we'll just have to watch that and, and, and get to know it. But I think that with everybody coming back except for Rashad, we're we're all really excited and and uh, we're ready to go for next year, and just want to finish off this year real real high and and keep gaining experience because that's what was helped us this year is getting experience last year and, and all throughout the offseason. So this year was, was great for us three to get experience of what it takes to, to play at the highest level 
this is my first time in the playoffs, so I, I think this is going to be a great, a great year for me to keep improving and, and getting better. Clemson's defense, what stands out about them? Just how much film have you watched? And just kind of what stands out about them so far? That they do uh, almost everything. They play, they play hard. They play tough, and and they really know their scheme really well. So you got to really get to know everything that they do, and and sometimes that can be a, a negative when when they do so much that you're planning for everything, and then they'll catch you slipping on something little. So we really got to just plan on on. Uh, Preparing, watching so much, watching a lot of film, and, and getting ready to play them because they're a unique defense and and they play really hard and tough, and we're excited. You guys went through ten games without really being tested. Then the last three, obviously, you were. Clemson hasn't been at all. Uh, how much did that benefit you? The last three games of having to really reach deep. Uh, I think it helps because just to be put in that situation, it, it kind of helps seeing where where we're gonna, what we need to do if we're behind and, and how it works, but. Uh, they're a really tough team, and, and they've won like 28 games in a row. So I think that they, they understand what it takes to, to win those games, those big games. They were obviously there last year. So I don't know if it's – I think it's definitely helping us out that we had some tough games this year, but they all know they all know what's what's going to happen and, and how it's going to be. So I think that it's going to be a pretty good matchup. As you watch a team like that on tape that hasn't had a, a real punch-in-the-mouth type game, is it harder to gauge who they are? Or are you watching just – players and seeing what, you know, knowing what type of athletes they have, or is there something that can be gained or, or is it harder to know because you haven't seen them be tested? Um, I, I guess you could say it's hard to see what it would be like if they were tested, but we really just watch scheme and, and, and the players that we're going up against, and, and they're all really talented guys, and, and they always play hard and, and tough and run their defense really well, so I think that the biggest thing that we're going to do is just try and play our game and, and see how it works out, but as far as us being us seeing if they if they're going to be able to be tested. I think that's just it's a big game. It's it's a it's a semifinal, so we know they're going to come ready to play, and and there's going to be no surprise there. Knowing that they're going to bring a lot of multiple looks on defense and stuff like that. As you think about Justin Fields from the day he walked in here last January to now, what type of growth have you seen out of him as a as a guy who reads defenses, as a passer, as, as a tight end, you're playing in the middle of the field most of the time, and if a quarterback's not elevating himself, you guys aren't usually being targeted. Right. Um, I think that he's just ever since he came in, he's always been good at IDing the defense and and seeing what they're in. And, and Coach Day's really and Coach Hirsch have been on him for that. And he's really good in the meeting room, really getting everything right. And I think he's definitely grown as a player. And and he's re he does a really good job of taking care of the football and not forcing it into into bad coverages based off of his reads. And I think that's something that he's really grown in and and stayed strong with. So I think that we know when he throws us the ball, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good. It's not going to be in a bad coverage or anything. He doesn't force anything. So I think that, that helps the receivers and it helps him just continue to take care of the football. Back to that one-handed catch. How many times have you relived it watching it on social media or film since uh, um, last week? I would say the like right after the game, I kind of it kind of blew up a little bit, so I saw it a lot. But since then, I haven't really watched it. Sometimes it'll pop up on my feed or something, and I'll just see it. But I haven't really gone on my way to watch it. I thought it was, it was a cool moment, but just – just a game that we, we won, and now we have to go on to the next one. That's yeah. one of the still grabs. The still photos make it look even better. Have you seen some yeah. of those? Yeah, I've, I've Is seen. Is that why you tried to catch the other one with one hand? <laughs> I, it, was a, it was kind of a botched play, and it was kind of a rush, so I thought I could only get the one, but after watching, I probably could have, like, reached out and grabbed it with two. You practice one-handed catches? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, just in case they come up? In case they come up, we always want to be prepared. You grew up watching Odell. He's uh, New York. He was in New York for a while when I was there, so he was the talk of the town. So, yep, ever had a bigger, bigger one-handed catch? Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We got Letterman Live. We've got the practice report. We got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buck IQ with Zach Bourne. For sure, we got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. We got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State athletics. We've got you covered here at Letterman Row.